Meanwhile, a series of reactions that have been coming in on the expected election commission announcement. Let's take a listen. Yes, we are absolutely ready to uh, go to the people with our positive agenda, to go to the people exposing what has happened so far with them in their lives, uh, thanks to the bad policies of the central government. And as far as pandemic preparedness is concerned, we hope that the Election Commission will take all due measures to ensure that people are protected. The, um, also the election paraphernalia, the employees of the Election Commission, people who work, are also protected. Congress Party's alliances are not in place at the moment. We're seeing your talks in Tamil Nadu are inclusive. Uh, the seat-sharing formula with the left parties uh, is uh, far from over. Assam is still wide open. So how do you think? Because the elections are around the corner. The Congress Party doesn't seem to be prepared with the alliances. No. How are you prepared for this? We are prepared. The team is prepared. The election will be in the time of election. And we do our work. 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 In Bengal, there are two lahars. One is the Bhagwa Lahar, the other is the Modi Lahar. The Bhagwa Lahar, 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 हिंसा का और कुशासन का माहौल है उससे वहाँ की जनता उब चुकी है मार्क्सवादी और ममता और उसके पहले कांग्रेस तीनों के प्रयोग से जनता निकलना चाहती है और अब विकल्प भारतीय जनता पार्टी है more details of that big story they're joining us from across the country Indrajit Kundu is in Kolkata Akshay Nath reporting from Chennai Gopi Krishnan Unnithan is getting us more details from Thiruvanthapuram Anand Patel is reporting from New Delhi Kumar Kunal of course continues to be with us from the national capital he's getting us details of the election commission Indrajit I'm going to come to you first the big question here the persona of Mamta Banerjee uh, you know, on one hand, on the other hand, is the anti-incumbency factor. Will that really play out against her? And in all of these days, the kind of developments that we've seen, vis uh, the interrogations in connection with the coal scam, is the is sympathy card really going to work for her this time around? Well, Sneha, you know, uh, the big question that is on the mind of each and everybody who is following the West Bengal election is going to be uh, uh, who is going to win this uh, high stakes battle. Everybody is trying to make a guess and trust me, nobody has an answer at this point in time. Uh, the game is absolutely open. Uh, it's going to be a very, very crucial and, and, and keenly fought uh, contest as far as West Bengal elections is concerned, specifically because uh, this, uh, this time the BJP uh, has come up as a very, very strong opposition force, which is really making a strong uh, pitch uh, to, to, uh, to form the government to win this election. So uh, unlike 2016, which almost seemed like a sweep election, it was an unilateral victory of Mabta Banerjee. It's not going to be an easy battle this time for the Trinamool Congress Supremo. So yes, uh, on the one hand, you have this huge election machinery of the BJP with the entire top BJP leadership, uh, starting from Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Amit Shah and the rank and file of the BJP camping here in West Bengal, uh, making it almost a mission for them to win and breach Mamta Banerjee's citadel here in West Bengal. On the other hand, you have team Mamta Banerjee, which uh, in a sense, she is the player and she is the captain of the entire team. She is leading from the front. So it's going to be a very, very crucial battle. As far as anti-incumbency is concerned, yes, the Trinamool Congress does have to battle that. Uh, there are corruption allegations uh, as well with the CBI and the uh, Enforcement Directorate and other central agencies uh, uh, also in the fray right now, just ahead of the election and conducting raids at each uh, uh, at various locations across West Bengal issues like the coal smuggling scam the the cattle smuggling scam have suddenly propped up they are gaining momentum it's nothing new because now I would remember even during the 2016 elections just ahead of the elections there was a Narda sting operation uh, that came uh, that blew up in front of the West mm. Bengal politics uh, in the middle of the West Bengal politics and uh, so this is nothing new there will be all these scams and there will be other issues as well issues concerning people's lives 
So it's a high stakes battle, both uh, political parties and not just the BJP and the Trinamool Congress. Even the left and Congress alliance, they're also gearing up because uh, on the 28th, just two days from now, there will be a massive show of strength at Kolkata's Brigade Parade Ground by the two parties. You have the new entrant of Asaduddin Oasis AIMIM, which is uh, making a debut of sorts uh, as far as West Bengal elections are concerned. And of course, the new political entrant, uh, Abbas Siddiqui, a cleric from Furfura Sharif, a very influential shrine, Muslim shrine in Hooghly district. He has also, uh, you know, got into the fray with his new party, the Indian Secular Front. So it's going to be a, a four, five pronged battle. Uh, but primarily, uh, as we uh, talk about these elections, it becomes interesting because of this very, very stiff resistance and challenge that the BJP leadership has decided mm. to put forth in front of Mamta Banerjee's government. Uh, two terms into office, it will be a very difficult challenge, of course, for Mamta Banerjee Absolutely. to get a third term. Whether or not she will be able to make it uh, is the big question at this point in time. Yes, absolutely. And with the entry of Asawadin Awesi also, uh, the question really is that will then he be able to you know, take away the minority votes from the Trinamool Congress? Is that a concern also within the TMC? We'll talk about that in a bit from now. Akshay also continues to be with us. Akshay, uh, in Tamil Nadu too, an unusual situation this time around. These are elections without JJ Lalita, without Karuna Nidhi. The, you know, there are smaller parties also, uh, people like Kamal Hassan, who, you know, uh, entered into the fray now. What's the kind of impact would you then see them making in these elections? Sneha, in the state of Tamil Nadu, no political party has had more than two continuous terms. Uh, earlier as well, the AIADMK has been lucky in having two continuous terms. But every uh, alternate year, it's generally the AIADMK, DMK competing with one another. This is an unusual time where the AIADMK has already completed two terms. And the big question is, will they be able to get a third time in office? And in this uh, year, we're going to see that they're going to contest without the support of J. Jailalita, their Amma and their biggest stalwart leader. And uh, whereas the DMK as well is also having a uh, un, uh, is a having a difficult situation with Mr. Karnanadi also passing away. So what will be the political scenario is a big question. There is a kind of a political vacuum that we've been continuously talking about. And yes, new entrants like Kamal Hassan will also be crucial because cinema and politics have always played a major role in Tamil Nadu. Be it MGR, Jailalita, even Karnanadi for that matter, have all had the hand in in cinema as as well as politics. And Kamal Hassan, uh, we need to remember the Lok Sabha polls had performed well. His political party had more vote share than the BJP in the state. Uh, unfortunately, though they were not able to successfully win any seats, they did have a good polling in most of the urban localities. And we're even being told by close sources that Kamal Hassan is likely to contest from one of the seats in uh, the city of Chennai itself. So in that scenario, which will be a very interesting uh, a fight in the state of Tamil Nadu and apart from that we'll also have to remember that the DMK and its allies had a beautiful victory uh, during uh, the Lok Sabha polls they had a clean sweep uh, so will that uh, be the similar scenario in this 2021 polls is something that we have to wait and watch but we need to know that the BJP is having a very hard fight here in Tamil Nadu all the strong leaders of the BJP, be it uh, Amit Shah, Narendra Modi, JP Nadda, all of them have been visiting uh, the state continuously. They have been campaigning. They've been trying to promote uh, the legacy of MGR and trying to take claim of it. So all these factors are playing out in Tamil Nadu as well, Sneha. And these are factors that the people of the state will be keenly watching. An election without Jalalita and Karna Nadi, whom will they be voting for is something that we'll have to wait and watch. Yes. Absolutely. Akshay, be with us. Uh, Gopi Krishnan is also with us uh, for more on that. Uh, you know, uh, Gopi, the Union Territory of Puducherry, interesting scenario there. There has been political instability and now the government, of course, has fallen. There's precedence rule. So will the sympathy card that the Congress is expected to play in the Union Territory work in its favour? What does it look like in the Union Territory of Puducherry, where all of these uh, months and years, really, all that we've seen is just a lot of bickering between the government uh, on one hand and also, of course, the former Lieutenant Governor Kiran Bedi on the other. 
Oh, well, Sneha, things have been quite complicated in this Union Territory of Puducherry, mostly because of its geographical structure, because most of the part of Puducherry lies within Tamil Nadu, and there is another portion of Puducherry which falls in Tamil uh, Kerala, which is almost on the opposite side of the coast, which is on the western coast. And also, coming towards the political situation in Puducherry, over the years we have seen that the Puducherry, the Union Territory, has swung between the NR Congress, which is, has been a part of the AADMK Alliance, and the Congress, which has been part of the DMK Alliance. At least in Puducherry, the Congress used to be taking the center stage or taking the role of the big brother. And that is how uh, in Naran, this Naran Swami he came up as the chief minister after the 2016 elections. But ever since that, we saw a tug of war between the ruling government and the governor, who later came in as Kiran Bedi. And there were the initial phases, if you could remember, a couple of years back, there was literal allegations and counter-allegations being made against each other. There is a little tug of war which was happening on Puducherry, and the protest even went on to the streets at some point. And off late, we had the surprise move from the president where Kiran Bedi was lifted or she was discharged of the duties of as the governor of Puducherry. And after that, we saw Tamil Rishi Santhar Rajan, who is also the former BJP state president from Tamil Nadu and the present Telangana uh, governor, who came in charge of Puducherry, lieutenant governor. After that, we saw this huge landslide from the Congress where many of their MLAs, they were resigning from the party and then they were joining the party. And last day, we also saw Prime Minister holding a mega rally in Puducherry, moving the voters of the Union Territory. Now, this has actually created a new scenario in the Union Territory where BJP, which has never been a large player, until for the recently has emerged as a key contender. Until now, NR Congress used to be the prime opposition in uh, Puducherry, but now we have an alliance which is led, we can say, equally by the BJP and the NR Congress. They actually hope that the incoming of senior leaders and uh, MLAs from the Congress will act in their favour. The Congress, on the other hand, hopes that the people are seeing what is, what is happening on the ground. There is actual uh, horse trade happening is what the Congress is alleging. And they actually believe that all these things will play into the minds of the people and there could be a sympathy wave which would emerge and that might get them through the election numbers is what the Congress believes as yes. far as Puducherry is concerned. Yes, uh, Gopi, be with us. We'll just come back to you for more on that. Anand Patel is also getting asked more from Delhi. In fact, he was just speaking to a couple of Congress leaders also. Uh, Rahul Gandhi, Anand, is uh, a Congress uh, member of parliament from Wynard in Kerala there. But it's, it's an interesting scenario where the Congress, in fact, is against the left in the state of Kerala. In West Bengal, it is in the process of working out an alliance with the left, isn't it? Interesting scenario for alliances when it comes to two different states. <coughs> Well, yes, you know, very crucial elections uh, for the Congress party. Uh, and a lot will depend on how the Congress party works out these alliances. If you take a look at uh, Assam, let's begin it from there. Uh, it has to uh, form an alliance with uh, Badruddin Ajmal's party. And already there have been uh, criticism from the BJP, particularly from uh, the Home Minister himself, that, uh, look, uh, the Congress party is allying with uh, uh, Ajmal's party. And uh, how can they prevent infiltrators uh, from Bangladesh? So that kind of a criticism the Congress party uh, will have to keep in mind. And also, when it comes to West Bengal, they're also it has an alliance with left parties, but the sheet sharing formula is yet to be worked out. They are holding a mega rally in Brigade Parade Ground on Sunday. And uh, uh, that will be a uh, left and Congress combined rally. And in that rally, uh, Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel will be uh, there as the main face of the Congress party. Uh, Rahul Gandhi is skipping that uh, 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 rally because uh, he doesn't want to be seen. The party doesn't want him to be seen uh, on the same stage with the left party because that will send a wrong message in Kerala where the Congress party is interestingly fighting against the left government. So, uh, so it's an interesting mix uh, of battles for the Congress party. It remains to be seen as to how it will, uh, you know, form these alliances because we've seen how in Bihar, uh, despite getting a large number of seats, the party could not uh, win uh, 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 a number of them and its strike rate was very poor. So that uh, issue is there in the mind of uh, DMK as well, where the Congress party is going to ally there in Tamil Nadu with it. And also in West Bengal, where the uh, seat sharing formula is yet to be finalized. So in both these states, it remains to be seen as to how much the Congress party demands and how much will it get. So that uh, issue is yet to be worked out. But yes, uh, a lot will depend uh, on the results of these five uh, states. Uh, 
uh, uh, on the uh, leadership of the Congress Party because uh, if the Congress Party performs well in Tamil Nadu, in Kerala and in Assam, we could well see Rahul Gandhi coming back as the party's president. But remains to be seen as to how these state polls will play out. Very crucial for the Congress Party in the end and, uh, and it will have a bearing on the leadership issue as well. Yes. Uh, be with us, Anand. Of course, Rahul Gandhi has already visited Kerala. He, in fact, was there uh, raising issues of, uh, of, uh, of the farmers, the kind of concerns that they've been facing. Also, talking about a different fisheries ministry, uh, again, a demand that generated a lot of controversy. Kumar Kunal also continues to be with us, reporting uh, from the national capital on developments as far as the election commission is concerned. The digital voter ID is going to be used, Kunal, by the election commission this time around, and that's going to be a challenge. It's the first time. Explain to us how does it work. The digital uh, voter card will be uh, implemented and all the uh, voters will be issued the digital card. They don't have to carry the physical identity, uh, identity uh, with them. But uh, there are challenges how that will be implemented, that will be rolled out during the press conference, how uh, the election commission is planning to implement this new uh, digital voter i-card that will be explained in the later in the press conference as well. But now all the eyes are on the press conference just a few minutes from now at 2 p.m. There is a crucial meeting at election commission, all the election commissioner, including the chief election commissioner and the deputy election commissioner will meet for approximately two hours and they will decide the final modalities of all these elections, when and where the dates will, uh, the, how the uh, COVID protocol will be taken care of, how the security guidelines will be implemented by the election commission of India. Even uh, there are concerns about the weather, the temperatures are going high, how that will be taken care of. Even the security deployment at various booths, especially the booths which are quite uh, significant and uh, which are being categorized as sensitive booths. These are the main challenges uh, from now on. And that's why we are uh, really witnessing an unprecedented preparation from the Election Commission of India. Uh, see, these kind of elections are being held at various junctures. But these, uh, the meeting, uh, meetings are happening uh, uh, quite regularly this time. And they are discussing each and everything, every detail, every nuances they are discussing. And uh, uh, the, what we are learning that uh, although there was an election in Bihar during this pandemic time, but this is a much larger election. There are elections in four states and one union territory. The, the significance is quite more. Even the law and order situation, especially in the West Bengal, is a matter of concern. There is a money and muscle power being used in Tamil Nadu as well. There is a different topographical challenges at Assam, Kerala, even in Puducherry, the political stability is in question. So all these challenges are there before Election Commission of India. And Election Commission of India, what we are learning, that they are telling, that they are working on each and every nuances. Hmm. And that's why uh, uh, they are taking their own time. And at 4.30, they are going to do a press conference. And for okay. the first 40, 45 minutes, they are going to provide the, all the details to the media that how the election will be conducted before yes. the announcement of the poll dates. Yes, Kunal, we've picked up from our sources, of course, that possibly in the state of West Bengal, elections will be carried out in eight phases. There are concerns about violence in the state. I'm going to go across again to Indrajit, who continues to be with us from Kolkata. Indrajit, the BJP, of course, you know, uh, given the fact that do not have a face in the state of West Bengal, will try very hard to cash in upon, as they always do, on the popularity of Prime Minister Modi and try to build it on from the momentum of momentum really of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections but does it appear that that's going to be a disadvantage given the fact that TMC has a face and it is Mamta Banerjee who is in fact many would argue has her popularity fairly intact in the state of West Bengal isn't it? Well uh, that's a very uh, important question uh, Sneha because uh, uh, not having a uh, face 
uh, is definitely going to cost the BJP. It's going to be a disadvantage for the BJP, uh, for starters, because Mamta Banerjee uh, is going to be the face for the Trinamool Congress. That has all, uh, you know, that uh, issue remains sorted as far as the Trinamool camp is concerned. The BJP, in its desperate bid to find a face, they have uh, given overtures to a lot of people. We've seen how, uh, you know, overtures were made to a former India skipper Saurav Ganguly. Uh, but uh, uh, it was an unsuccessful bid because Saurav Ganguly has categorically stated that he is not uh, planning to enter politics at this point in time. Then we've seen uh, Mohan Bhagwat meeting uh, Mithun Chakravarti, another star uh, in Bengal. And uh, there is a lot of speculation still about uh, Mithun Chakravarti's possible, uh, possible entry into the BJP. Remember, at one point in time, he was in the Trinamool Congress. He was a Trinamool Congress Rajya Sabha MP, but he has kept a safe distance away from the Trinamool Congress ever since the Sharda scam broke and he was in the scanner. Uh, there are other stars as well. You know, the BJP is making overtures to Prashanji Chatterjee. Uh, there was a lot of speculation about that as well. So uh, not just within its own party ranks where there are multiple contenders, be it Dilip Ghosh, be it, uh, you know, Swapan Das Gupta, be it Babul Supio, uh, you know, so many okay. faces. But the BJP is yet to finalize on one single uh, face with whom they will go for the campaigning. At this point in time, it seems like somebody who has an edge, apart from yes. Dilip Ghosh, of course, is Subindu Adhikari, because he is being projected as that big Undoubtedly. leader. Undoubtedly. We'll continue to discuss that in Rajit in a bit from now, because that's our top focus. Uh, 430 is that important announcement from the Election Commission. I'm thanking all my colleagues for the moment. We'll, of course, keep coming back to you all in a bit, as that is our top focus here. Hi, everyone. Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.